Hey guys, Ash here from Escape Studios bringing you another tips and tricks video. Today I'm going to be reminding you how to make ID passes in Maya and what their benefits are in Nuke. So you can see here I've made a scene of a bunch of E's. I've rendered it out and I like the look of the render. However, when I've rendered it out and taken it into Nuke, I've realized that I'm not quite happy with some of the colors and I'd like to change them. In this example, it'd be very easy to change the colors. However, if you've just spent two days rendering a 400 frame sequence, you don't want to have to go through all that again. ID passes can help you there. I'm going to go back into Maya. I want to change the colors of the red, blue, and yellow E's. I'm going to select all of my E's and create a new layer. I'll call it ID passes. The first thing I need to do is select everything in the scene that I don't want to show up and give them all a black matte surface shader. You do this simply by selecting surface shader and making them black. Now, the way we make ID passes is we lock information into the red, blue, and green channels of the render. Then Nuke can isolate them and create mats for them. So the first thing I'm going to do is select one of my E's and give it a red surface shader. You'll notice I'm just picking the bog standard red, blues, and greens as I create my surface shaders. That's because I know these are the right values for me to use. Now I'm going to go to Render and Batch Render, and you'll see an ID pass renders incredibly quickly because there's barely any information in it. This is the benefit of the ID pass. Now I'm going to jump back into Nuke and create a read node. I'm going to read my ID pass in. You can see it's the same image, however, I've just isolated certain amounts of information. Now, if I create a color correct node and start adjusting the dials, you'll see that it affects my entire image. However, if I plug the mask arrow into my ID pass, go to the ranges tab, and then in the mask options, select RGBA red, you'll see when I start adjusting the dials now, it's only going to affect what's in the red channel of my mask. So anything that has the red surface shader that I put on will be affected by the node. You can see that this allows me to change the color of my blue E on the fly without having to go back into Maya. There's a huge benefit to this. You can change things in your composite without having to re-render all your layers. It's a massive time saver. And it's not just the color correct node. It's any node that has a mask. I'll pull the mask for this gray node up into the ID pass. In the mask options, select blue. And now the gray node will only affect what was in the blue channel of the ID pass. I hope that's helped you guys out. If you are still having trouble, click here. It will take you to the escape blog where I explain this in more detail. Hit subscribe now so you won't miss out on any more of these videos. And we'll see you next week.